During IVF, fertility medications are used to mature several eggs at the same time. Some women, however, are very sensitive to these medications. These women can produce a large number of eggs, which is good, but they can also develop a problem called OHSS, or ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is rare but potentially life-threatening. Today on Infertility TV, I will help you learn all about OHSS and whether you are at risk for OHSS and how to reduce the chances that you will develop it. Stay tuned. Human beings produce a lot of abnormal embryos that do not have the ability to produce a live-born baby. In order to get around this problem, IVF experts use fertility medications to help women mature many eggs at the same time. We know that more eggs means the possibility of making more embryos, and this increases the odds of finding a few healthy, normal embryos that can produce a pregnancy. The most common fertility medications used during IVF are injections of hormones called gonadotropins. These medications contain the same hormones that the pituitary gland makes to mature eggs in the ovaries naturally. There are several different brand names for these medications, but they all have the same risk of OHSS. What causes OHSS? To understand what causes OHSS, it is important to understand that every egg in the ovary is contained in a tiny cyst called a follicle. You can see some of the larger follicles when you do an ultrasound of the ovaries. These follicles are made up of millions of cells. These cells produce many different hormones and compounds that are released into the blood. One of these compounds is called VEGF. VEGF makes your blood vessels leak. Leakage of fluid out of the blood vessels is responsible for most of the problems associated with OHSS. Using fertility medications increases the number of follicles that develop and increases VEGF. Who is at greatest risk for developing OHSS? Women who are young, women who are thin, and women who don't ovulate regularly, especially those women with PCOS are at greatest risk. However, any woman who takes fertility medications can develop OHSS, though it is less likely in women not in those groups. Although it is not possible to prevent OHSS 100% of the time, IVF experts can utilize several methods to help reduce your risk. We can break these down into steps to take before you start fertility medications, while you are taking them, and after the egg retrieval. Before starting medication, your doctor should check the levels of a hormone in your blood called AMH. Women with higher AMH levels are more sensitive to fertility medications. The doctor should reduce the dose of fertility medications in women with high AMH levels. Some studies show that taking a medication called metformin two months before starting the fertility medications can reduce the chances of developing OHSS. While taking the fertility medications, your doctor should monitor you closely with blood tests and ultrasound. If your doctor sees that you are responding very vigorously, they can start to make adjustments like further reducing the dose of medications and monitoring you more frequently. The last medications that a woman takes before the egg retrieval are called the trigger injections. In women who are at high risk for OHSS, Doctors should consider making changes to the trigger injections, such as reducing the dose of HCG to help reduce VEGF production. It is also a good idea to start another medication called cabergolin, which can block the effects of VEGF. It is only after the egg retrieval is completed that the symptoms of OHSS start to develop. The more eggs that were retrieved, the higher the chances for developing OHSS. Symptoms of OHSS include weight gain, increase in bloating and abdominal pressure, shortness of breath, decreased urination, and even nausea and vomiting. Despite all of the precautions I discussed before, if your doctor thinks that you are still at high risk for developing OHSS after the egg retrieval, then you should avoid doing an embryo transfer and freeze all of your embryos instead. Why? 
Well, if you do an embryo transfer and become pregnant, the HCG produced from the pregnancy will continue to stimulate your ovaries and make the problems worse. If you do develop OHSS and too much fluid leaks out of your blood vessels, your blood will get thicker and more prone to blood clots, which can cause severe problems like a stroke. It is very important to take medications to reduce the chance for blood clots to form. Finally, much of the fluid that leaks out of your blood vessels will settle in your abdomen. Your doctor can drain fluid from your abdomen in much the same way as when you have an egg retrieval. This can help you feel better right away and can speed up the time it takes for the problem to resolve. In addition to hosting Infertility TV every week, I am a practicing physician. If you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me by video, check out my website at IVF1.com. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button right now. It's like having a fertility specialist in your phone.